Hello and welcome everyone. My name is Malcolm Maestrell and I'm a membership services coordinator with IAAP. Thank you for joining us for today's webinar, Build, Compare and Select Courses on Web Accessibility. Before we begin, we have a few general housekeeping items to go over. Closed captioning is provided to enable closed captioning, select the CC icon at the bottom of your Zoom screen. The stream text links for English, French, German, Spanish, and Swedish will be posted in the chat as well. And I'm gonna go ahead and pass it off to my colleague, Susanna, for the translations. Vous pouvez lire les sous-titres en français si vous suivez le lien fourni dans le chat. Sie können das auf Deutsch lesen, wenn Sie dem im Chat angegebenen Link folgen. Puedes leer el español si sigues el enlace provisto en el chat. Du kan läsa texten på svenska om du klickar på länken som vi lägger i chatten. Thank you very much. And today we are also running a test of Zoom's new sign language interpretation feature. So we would greatly appreciate any feedback you may have. As we are doing that, we are providing both international and American sign language interpretation for today's webinar. To view the ASL interpreter, select the interpretation icon at the bottom of your Zoom screen. Microphones are muted to prevent any background noise or disruptions. Please post your questions in the Q&A. Questions will be saved until the end of the presentation. The chat will be monitored for general dialogue and technical issues, and today's webinar will be recorded and available in our webinar archives, and we will send out a copy of the recording to everyone who registered. And now I'd like to turn today's program over to our moderator, Susanna Lauren. Thank you, Malcolm, and welcome everyone to this um, uh, EU webinar series again. Uh, we uh, are doing the second last webinar of this um, semester. And today we have a pleasure to welcoming Daniel Montalvo from uh, W3C. If we can have the next slide, please, thank you. Um, and Daniel is going to talk uh, to us about the training possibilities that, that W3C is providing free of charge. As you know, um, when people prepare for the IAAP certification, they can go to accredited training providers or they can study themselves. And they can also, of course, use all of the free resources out there. And, and W3C is, is, has created a very interesting um, set of training sessions and and other good material that we are really eager to hear more about from Daniel and I will let him um, introduce himself in a minute. I just wanted to to say also that um, as part of this uh, webinar series uh, we are also interested in hearing from you uh, our members and, and non-members what you're interested in for next year. We are planning both our events and also the webinar series so if you have any ideas you're welcome to to post them in the Q&A or in the chat or just email us uh, afterwards. So Daniel, please, the floor is yours. Thank you very much, Susanna, uh, Malcolm, um, and uh, everyone here. I will now try to share my screen here. Let's see. There we go. So as Susanna was saying, we're going to provide some, some resources, some examples uh, on training. We will be focusing today more on a specific uh, type of, of training, which is the way curricula uh, that we built during the last uh, three years. Uh, so first of all, I'd like you to focus on what are the use case for these curricula. We, we had uh, a variety of audiences that we consider for this, among which we can include, of course, lecturers trying to include accessibility in their courses. We wanted to provide guidance on how these knowledge could be included in uh, other ICT or other disciplines, uh, university courses. We also thought, of course, on a, of an accessibility consultant that wants to create their own training. So you may be expert in accessibility, but you may need some sort of guidance for you to create your training. 
then their uh, product owner uh, realm was also explored. Uh, so, so some people uh, may need to compare among different course offerings that they've been given. So uh, the curriculum could be a, a, a very good middle ground for them to go and, and say, hey, this, this is covered in this particular offer. This is not covered there. We need to make a decision. So that's going to help us. The curriculum is going to help us make that decision. And then also in the, for, for procurers that need to write their own requirements, the curricula we think could serve very well their purposes in, in the way that they could uh, focus on, on, on what's included in the curricula to actually write uh, um, a requirement that would then finally serve their, their purposes. Today, I would like to not only give you, of course, uh, uh, a walk through, uh, through the different parts of the curricula that we have in, in WTC way, but also I would like to somewhat relate this to the uh, IAAP bodies of knowledge. There's, we can't say there's, there's a direct mapping between those because of course the scope is, is different. The curricula, as we've, say, as we've said before, tries to speak more to the instructors or to the lecturers or procurers or product owners. The uh, bodies of knowledge, of course, it tries to speak more to, to the students uh, that, that, that need some, some training to get their, their certification. So the scope in that regard is, is different. But roughly speaking, we could say that the, the, the first part of the curriculum that we have on, on um, foundation modules uh, is more tied to the uh, accessibility core competencies uh, certification. And then the other three parts, developer, designer, and content author uh, is more related to the web uh, accessibility specialist uh, certification. Um, so what's in the uh, curricula? What do we have in in the uh, in in our curricula? As I said before, the first part uh, of the the curricula are what we call the foundation modules. They provide basically uh, an introduction to to accessibility, so that instructors could then use those materials to build their own courses. The designer. Uh, developer and content authors is that we call specialized roles and those go a little bit more in depth into what each of, of the roles uh, training requires. So the developers focuses more on coding and markup. The designer roles focuses more on visual design, information, interaction, design, and also multimedia and animations. And then the content authors focuses more on content writing strategies to make your, your writing accessible, uh, including, of course, uh, multimedia uh, and, and text alternatives. So uh, we said the, the curricula uh, has different parts. Now, within these different parts, we decided to structure the, the different parts in, into modules uh, that are, that are role-based, as we say. And the reason for that is actually because we found that some people may want to use different modules uh, at a different time. So, for example, if you're teaching someone who, who uh, is a developer or will be a developer, you may want to use the introductory modules, the foundation modules, and then focus specifically on the ones that are for the developers. Or if you're teaching someone who is both a developer or a designer, you may want to use these, these, these both modules, developers and designers, because that's a, you know a joint uh, training or or something like that. So that's that's uh, the, the 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 reason for that. Then around the modules, the core materials that we have in there are called the learning outcomes. Uh, learning outcomes are basically what a student is supposed to know or be able to do after completing a specific uh, training or course. And those are written uh, in a, a following the Bloom's taxonomy. These these are uh, you know actionable verbs, uh, direct. So those are the the core materials there. And then to complement these materials, to give actually the guidance that some, especially those who are not very familiar with training, need, we have the uh, uh, teaching uh, and and ideas for for assessment. Uh, the teaching ideas are actually uh, tips on how a specific learning outcomes uh, are, are taught. The assessment ideas are ideas on how specific learning outcomes uh, could be assessed. And then the uh, competencies are what the 
prerequisites that that's another word that we we uh, were discussing and finally we we use competency CC, but that's actually the, the prerequisite that we think students should have prior to start learning materials based on a specific module. And an example for that is when we dive into the developer designer content author, the prerequisites for each of the modules uh, vary, but the, the foundation modules are at least in, in the prerequisites of, of the first modules, because we understand that before diving into your specific topic, you should have at least some some knowledge of of really accessibility core competencies, as as IAAP calls that. Uh, then the teaching resources are actually the materials we point instructors to to be able to build their courses and get strategies. So those include, for example, the the W3C Way tutorials. Uh, these include the, the W3C videos on, on how people, well, on, on perspective videos, future videos that we may, may include. Basically, that's uh, W3C way uh, materials to help instructors build their own courses. So now let's go through the different parts of these. And as I said before, paying specific attention to what specifics of this could be uh, related to to IAAP uh, bodies of knowledge, uh, what are out of scope or what's something that we uh, uh, could probably cover in, in future curricula, maybe if, if, if the time permits or if there are resources for that. So to start with uh, the foundation modules, we have five of those modules. The first module is called What is Web Accessibility? And that basically tries to uh, set the stage, to, tries to give an introduction, some sort of an enlightenment for students who are new to accessibility. So, so that provides guidance for instructors to be able to build around uh, stories of, of people with disabilities or, or given uh, experiences that, that people with disabilities want uh, to share in their class or in, in the course or through videos or something like that so that people actually you know get this this aha moment that, that we always uh, talk about about what what is really uh, what we're talking about when we when we say accessibility now that, that doesn't have a, a clear mapping to the uh, bodies of knowledge uh, I, I think that's that's throughout I've seen this certainly this this uh, materials and and that those calls are throughout the materials so the idea that that people with disabilities need to be included and that there needs to be actually uh, focus on on how people with disabilities experience uh, accessibility is is throughout so I wouldn't say this is a specific part but um, I, I would I would say this is uh, basically all throughout the materials. Now, what is actually more related to the um, uh, bodies of knowledge is the, the part four of, of this uh, accessibility core competence, which is disabilities, uh, challenges, and assistive technologies. We do have uh, some specific on that on the second of our modules that's called people and digital technology. We start those modules by giving a perspective on the different types of disabilities that uh, that 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 exist. Uh, we we don't do that much of a categorization. We once again try to focus more on the practical aspect. So we we refer instructors to videos and existing materials or or or, or real stories if they can bring those to class, and then we uh, try to establish a, a, a relationship between these stories and what's actually the core. Uh, components of accessibility. So, so, so for accessibility to work, you do need a uh, part on, on the author of the website. Uh, in this case, you need the part on, on the user agent, that's the browser basically, and you need part as well on the assistive technology. So we, we explain that basically accessibility is a, is a joint effort. We introduce that uh, for, for later uh, discussion. Then the next part of the uh, uh, accessibility core competence, uh, uh, competencies body is the one on benefits of accessibility. We do have a specific module that we call business case and benefits. So, so we tie this to our existing business benefit, uh, business case uh, resource in, in way. And we basically point to uh, the actual benefits of accessibility we describe uh, successes or cases of success from, from different competencies that have accessibility. 
as the body of knowledge says, not, not as a project that starts and ends, but actually as a program that's that's uh, iterated throughout and that's maintained and updated uh, through through time. Then the sixth um, uh, the sixth part of the uh, core competencies body uh, talks about standards and laws for in, in the first part. We have that in module four, principles, standards and checks. We introduce the uh, four principles of accessibility. Uh, we then go to the standards uh, with focus on W3C standards, uh, of course, but also with, with guidance on inst for instructors to, to actually detect what types of uh, standards and policies exist in their region and how all of these may differ or, or may affect the their students. And then to close this, we provide some sort of easy checks, that's how we call it in, in W3C way, so that people, even though they're not evaluating accessibility yet, even though they're not or may not be familiar with accessibility yet, they at least have a common understanding, at, at, at just a, a starting point as to what accessibility means and, and how accessibility affects uh, people. We would discuss, I don't know, how, how to test link titles, how to test uh, link titles, link text, how to test uh, uh, page titles, uh, how to look for, for contrast issues that might be very obvious. So that's really the, the closing part of that, of that module. And then the second part of the uh, uh, accessibility core competencies uh, body of knowledge that talks about managing uh, strategies, we have as well in the planning, in the getting started with accessibility module, that's the fifth module. We there have uh, planning strategies, integrating strategies. We have a, a discussion for instructors to understand the importance of communicating the message that accessibility uh, needs to be disseminated into different team roles, that each of them has a responsibility, and that actually uh, in including accessibility it needs to be something that happens from the top of, of, of the organization to the very bottom, that is uh, the managerial teams need to be uh, a part of, of that strategy to include accessibility in, in their organization. So that's the foundation modules. Uh, as I say, this these are really uh, more uh, into the accessibility core competencies. Now the other third parts, the developer, designer, and content author, did, uh, are more more related to the web accessibility specialist. As as we said before, the curricula focuses more on web accessibility. We don't touch on accessibility of the built environment. Uh, we don't touch on, on other uh, more generic, if you want, philosophical or historical uh, categorizations of, of people with disabilities. Uh, we, we focus more on the web aspect of, of accessibility uh, to start with. And also we, we provide some, some bits on digital accessibility as well. So not just the web itself, but also maybe some uh, products or, or applications uh, as well. So the developer part has seven uh, modules. The first uh, five of them, I would say, are more related to the web accessibility specialist body of knowledge where, where they understand and interpret accessibility specifications and te uh, techniques. And that, that's the, the part where I would put these five. So the first one, page structure, gives a, an overview of the different structural elements of the page, the sections, headings, titles, uh, and, and, and other structural elements of the page from, from a coding perspective. It explains how this should be, should be coded. Then the menus goes more in depth into the different types of menus that exist, navigational menus, uh, applicational menus, why or when you should use a navigational menu, when you should use an application menu. Once again, gives coding uh, strategies uh, as to how these should be, should be coded. The third is about images and uh, discuss, uh, discusses the different types of images from, from a developer's perspective, uh, how to code a decorative image, how, how to uh, make it, uh, an image, uh, an, an, an alternative text for an image uh, visible uh, for, for assistive technology so that the users can, can enjoy the image. And of course, we, we signpost here that some of the responsibilities of the alternative text may not fall under the developer. That may be something that the designer needs to be taken care of or the content author 
uh, at a later stage, but still the developer has to know how, how to code, how to prepare the code for these later alternatives to come. Tables discusses uh, coding aspects for tables, uh, simple complex tables, how to include summaries for tables, how to make explicit relationships between table headers and, and data cells. Forms covers uh, forms, uh, basically uh, what, what the importance of, of labels, how, how the different labels uh, should be coded. Explicit labels, implicit labels, we discuss how to make uh, you know requirement uh, re required fields uh, uh, available and understood by assistive technologies, and and also how to include uh, error messages or validation messages that the form needs to have. In also instruction instructions uh, uh, as well from from a developer's perspective. So that's the first part of the developer modules. The second part of the developer modules focuses more on both widgets and rich applications. And we do have that on the web accessibility specialist uh, body of knowledge as well. So, so it's pretty much a one-on-one mapping between create interactive controls and widgets. That's our custom widgets module. And then the part on, on rich applications, uh, that's also uh, in, in 1.6 uh, that says create accessible uh, Single applications. We we do have uh, our our module on on reach applications on on the developer part as well. So basically, those discuss uh, how how to make the relationship between the different widgets uh, apparent, how to handle states of the different widgets, how to handle keyboard focus, how to handle dynamic updates. That's pretty much uh, what's what's in those in those modules. The designer modules, once again, we have uh, some of them that have to do with uh, creating accessible uh, web content um, and, and understanding, of course, the, the different uh, standards and techniques. But this time we focus more on, on the design aspect. So the visual design module focuses more on the different uh, color uh, requirements and uh, also in, in layouts of what, what constitutes uh, you know a, a layout that can be customized for different user needs uh, we, we discussed the importance for instructors to, to communicate to designers that these provisions should be made as soon as possible in the design process so that later on it can be implemented then the second one the second module on information design discusses different uh, aspects of uh, how to group and provide information uh, that is accessible to everybody. We discuss uh, the, how to group information in a way that is successful. We provide hints for for designers to to uh, make the test easier to understand and and more uh, easy to process for people. And then the navigation design. We discuss different aspects of navigation, including page navigation, site navigation. Uh, the different use of, of uh, other navigational and orientation mechanisms such as breadcrumbs or sitemaps uh, that once again, uh, the sooner the designer understands the, the relevance of those and the sooner the designer knows how to implement those in the design, the better that product is going to be uh, performing later on in terms of accessibility. And then we uh, focus more on the uh, interoperability and uh, compatibility issues that you have on the uh, web accessibility specialist, that's I think 2.1. Because we start focusing now on interaction design, basically different ways of interaction uh, that different people uses, uh, different people use. It, it's not just a mouse, it's of course keyboard, it's, it's uh, touch devices, it's uh, keyboard uh, and assisted uh, keyboard and screen readers, which uh, may look like similar from the beginning, uh, but it's not that similar. There's, there's of course nuances that needs to be communicated. Then if we, we want to go to the images and graphics, we discuss not just uh, what types of images or, or how they should be they should be coded. In this case, we do give uh, designers a perspective on uh, how they could make their imagery uh, appealing for people, how, how different icons and how different illustrations can help uh, people with, for example, cognitive disabilities understand more the, the text, but also uh, an appropriate balance between what's too much and what's too little, uh, what, what, what makes it easier to understand, what makes it 
uh, overwhelming or, or, or difficult to process. And then in the multimedia and animation uh, module, we discuss the different uh, approaches, the different alternatives that multimedia content requires, descriptions, uh, transcripts, captions, and and uh, and also we provide some knowledge on the different types of animations that can create uh, seizures and physical reactions. We encourage instructors to really, really be uh, communicating the, the the problems with those and the uh, the need to to avoid those uh, in, in in the designs. To close this out for for the forms module, we focus more in how uh, a form should be laid out. Laid out, we provide, of course, guidance for designers when they have to include the, the different form fields, what you know, naming techniques or what uh, prototyping techniques are, are useful. Then we also go into instruct, instruction messages and error messages so that uh, the design of the form is already as accessible as it could be for developers and content authors to, uh, to include the specifics of each of the forms. So the last part of the uh, curricula, uh, as of now, is the content author modules. We said that focuses more on writing uh, and, and, and content writing and text and, and a little bit of multimedia as well. Um, uh, the first part, the clear content part, is focused more on the actual text that a content author should, should be providing. It, it gives a uh, uh, content author's uh, guidance um, on how to teach uh, clear content uh, uh, um, sections like, like, for example, plain language and, and how to explain the different uh, abbreviations that you may need to be used, be using, how to provide uh, explanations for complex terms. And sometimes as, as much as we'd like to use uh, easy to understand and clear language, sometimes we do need to use complex terms. And, and, and that's uh, something that uh, should be explained so that everyone can at least have the opportunity to understand uh, and to go to the definition of those terms. The structure uh, goes through the different structure elements, but in this case, from a uh, content author's perspective. So in the developers, we discussed how to code all of this. Now we actually discuss what specific content should go into the page title, what specific content should go into the heading, what specific uh, function the paragraphs and lists uh, perform or play within the page so that the content author understands when and why they can use uh, each, each of them. Uh, the forms field, uh, we uh, discussed those from, from a content author's perspective. So assuming there's been a, a, a design or there's been uh, uh, an authoring tool that a content author is using to create their forms we provide tips on what specific messages uh, they should be including uh, for, for them to be accessible um, so but once again from from a, a content writing uh, perspective the images uh, module um, focuses uh, more on how different types of text alternatives are are written what, what are the differences between uh, functional images uh, and, for example, uh, complex images that needs a, a, a complete separate description. We explain or we provide guidance for instructors to, to teach these to content authors to make them understand the differences. The data tables focuses more on uh, header versus cell relationship. Uh, what's in the header, what's in the cell, how a table needs to be thought through so that it's as accessible as possible, and also focuses uh, uh, on, on different data visualization paradigms that uh, content authors can use. So for example, if, if there's a complex table, you could provide that very same data in, in, a, in an image uh, or a, a chart or a diagram, or you could provide this uh, in, in, for example, nested list for different audiences to be able to understand the information better. And to close the the modules in this content author, we use we we go once again for the multimedia, but in this case we we try to focus more first of all on the planning aspects of the multimedia, so that instructors can then teach different planning strategies, uh, so, so so that content authors understand when they need audio description, when they need cap, uh, um, transcripts, uh, how to include captions why automated uh, captions uh, are not enough, and sometimes they need to be um, 
a mandate. Uh, so all of that in, in the planning phase. And then we basically describe the, the how, how examples and, and how audio description captions and, and, trans and transcripts uh, could be included uh, from a content author's perspective. So we used to to have this, and we actually have this in the very beginning of the curricula. These are essentials. We call that essential for teaching accessibility. And that's, once again, one of those things that maps throughout the different uh, bodies of knowledge, both, I would say, in this case, both the, the accessibility core competencies and the web accessibility specialist. The first uh, is on involving people with disabilities. Actually, uh, we, we have found out that the more you try to involve uh, people with disabilities, the more successful your, your teaching is going to be, uh, the more easy it's going to be for students to understand why are they doing what they're doing. And that also ties back to the second one, to the communicate the why and the how. Some, sometimes accessibility ends up being like a, a checklist. Uh, you, you go through that list, you check whatever ticks you think you don't, and then uh, off, off you move to another thing. We encourage for, for a different approach, uh, not just to, to go through the list, which of course sometimes you have to do, but also to explain to students why are you doing what you're doing and how this could be done so that they understand the impact, the real impact that they're going to make that, that they're making on, on people. Cover all disabilities is something that uh, sometimes uh, can can be uh, challenging, but of course the effort is advised for instructors to to focus on on as at least as much uh, disabilities spectrum as as possible. It's very easy for us to focus on. Uh, I don't know. We have a friend or we have a colleague with a certain disability, and we think that's that's uh, all disabilities, but that's really not the case. So so we we always encourage people to explore the different range of disabilities, and you have done a very good job on on the. Uh, uh, bodies of knowledge explaining the different types of disabilities and not just the types but also the different uh, models uh, of, of disabilities uh, which is uh, gives a, a very uh, good and, and profound historical perspective. Uh, explain accessibility holistically, uh, we touched on that briefly before so basically that's relating accessibility uh, to other disciplines that interact with that. Uh, usability is one of those, universal design is one of those, you have that mentioned as well on the bodies of knowledge. Inclusion could probably not be considered a discipline by itself, but inclusion as, as a you know as, as a way of doing, if you want, it's also uh, has a very close relation to, to accessibility. And then last but not least, if this might be obvious, but uh, making your teaching accessible is something we need to pursue. Sometimes it just, uh, there are things that just uh, slip through or there are things that we haven't thought about and that can happen. So yeah, just be open for that. Uh, process feedback from from students or from people in general, and be be always open open for improvement. So if you want to give feedback to us, we would be delighted. If if so, uh, there's uh, the published version of the curricula is now under w three dot o r g slash w a i slash curricula. That's c u r r. I C U L A. Um, we have uh, an, an uh, GitHub repository. Uh, that's where the work has been uh, carried out, and that's GitHub G I T H U B dot C O M slash W three C slash W A I dash C U R R I C U L A slash issues slash new that's that's the direct link if you want to open a new issue if you think you know something is is not covered uh i do have to say that this project is is now concluded in terms of what was uh, scoped for the project so maybe we don't get to that uh, immediately but who knows maybe in the future there's opportunities for for us to not just improve what what's what's already there but also to provide uh some some future curricula on on things that are in the uh, bodies of knowledge, but are not currently on our curricula. So I'm thinking mainly on quality assurance. I'm thinking of managerial uh, roles that also have a role in accessibility. So that's if you want to open an issue, if you want to write email, uh, the email for that is wai-eo-editors at w3.org. That's the email where you can send us feedback. 
We have a first uh, implementation of the curricula. We have a free online course that is uh, currently called Introduction to Web Accessibility. We were in the process of, of uh, deciding how and, and when we should be updating that course. That's through EDX, through the EDX platform. So if you want to know more about this, uh, uh, get in, in touch with me. I'll, I'll be giving email uh, shortly on the next uh, slide. But if you want to take that course, of course, uh, we uh, advise you to, to do so. And with that, I am finished. Uh, thank you so much for being here and for uh, attending this, this webinar. I do encourage you to visit w3.org slash way. It's not just the curricula, as Susanna was saying before. There's a lot of guidance. There's a lot of supporting materials. We have tutorials. We have uh, perspective videos. We have um, different uh, introduction to the to the standards. So sometimes uh, we see that people tend to go straight away to the standard, and that may not be necessarily the right approach. We do have explainers from different versions in WCAG. We have also, also explainers for ATAG. That's the authoring tool accessibility guidelines. And WCAG is the web content accessibility guidelines for the captioners. And, and we have basically uh, yeah, a, a lot of also videos on, on perspectives. We are working on new videos that we're going to be uploading uh, later this year or early next year. So uh, I, I encourage you to visit that page. And if you want to write to me directly, my email is dmontalvo, that's D-M-O-N-T-A-L-V-O at w3.org. Thank you so much. And yeah, I'm open now for your questions or comments. Thank you, Daniel. That was very uh, insightful and full of full of information <laughs> for everyone. <laughs> so, so we did have uh, quite a few questions here. Uh, the first one is more IWP related. So, where where are the IWP recognized trainers? I believe who are. <laughs> so, um, there are. Uh, so, just to be clear, IWP doesn't kind of recognize training providers as such, but we have an approval process for the training providers that provide uh, IWP certification preparation courses. And those are right now DQ, the DQ University. They provide uh, preparation courses for CPAC and WAS um, in English. And then Funka has preparation courses for uh, WAS, CPAC and ADS. So the um, accessible document specialist as well in English, as well as uh, some other local languages. And then here Colors um, in Mexico, they have preparation courses for the CPEC exam in Spanish. Maybe also in English, I'm not sure, but I know they do, at least they do it in, in Spanish. So those are the ones that are approved training providers, but you are of course welcome to uh, study yourself just using the open sources that we have in the body of knowledge or using like W3C material or any other material or 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 do training with other uh, other providers and they can be just as good of course but it's just that the approved training providers we know that their course material kind of fits the exam so that is how we do it but we otherwise IWP is not kind of claiming that this training provider is better than that training provider that that is not how we work so <clears throat> Uh, we have another question here. Will the curricula be kept updated as knowledge of good practices evolve? Uh, how frequently? Yeah, that's that's a good question. Uh, so that's something, and, and I, I I will take the opportunity here to mention the the European Commission, who has founded this this project. Uh, and at this point, we the, the Education and Outreach Working Group, that's the group that, that uh, who, who's responsible for the curricula, do update when there's, there's you know, uh, things that are clearly out of date. We, we do try to update those. But as I said before, at, at this point, there's, there's uh, yeah, no no future plans for adding more. So if, if we start seeing that when years go by, that, of course, there's something that's clearly out of date and should be uh, taken care of, we will probably do. But at the moment, there's no other uh, plan for for new curricula. But basically, yeah, if there's something that falls out of date, we we will try to update. Of course, that not happens. That doesn't happen uh, uh, overnight. But uh, yeah, that's that's uh, we we try to to update things basically. Yeah. So so if I understand you correctly, there would need another need to be another project or another kind of funding to make a, a bigger update or a kind of a redesign of, of the courses that would require something kind of a, a bigger effort from 
from the W3C side more than the kind of regular day-to-day -day work, if is that how I? I would say when there's minor updates we could do, if there's a major thing, probably we, we would, yeah, we we'll need to tie this to a given project or to a given effort or, or yeah, that's. Mm -hmm. Okay, so another question is, am I allowed to use the Y material in the trainings I provide to clients? You are, as long as you reference that uh, this is from Way. So, and there's a license uh, that you could go through uh, if if uh, there's questions, but definitely you, you are you're allowed. So the idea is that other, even commercial um, uh, providers can use the material in their own products and services, so to speak. That's the idea here, that anyone can use it for. Anyone can use it, yeah. but they need to acknowledge that this is from yes, Way. But that's that's kind of beautiful that you share with with the whole community. I think that is one of the really cool things about about this. So another question is <laughs> this is interesting. How is IWP and W3C connected? <laughs> Uh, well, um, there's no formal connection, I would say, uh, but many of the subject matter experts in the field are, of course, members, both in members or uh, or kind of experts are working with IWC, uh, with W3C standards and are also members of IWAP and so on. So I think we share quite a few of the uh, the good people around, but but uh, but there's no kind of ownership or, or something like that, no formal connection. I don't know if you want to to say something about that, Daniel, but that's pretty much it. Yeah, we, we, we're a, it, we're a small world, so we we know each other, and that's why we you know keep at every, everything up to date and we, we keep each other up to date basically uh, but yeah there's there's no formal relationship uh between the C and IEP yeah so I think we kind of serve different parts of the ecosystem uh yeah. so so we are kind of collaborating just as um IWAP EU is also part of the European Disability Forum so we are we are actually members of EDF so there we have a kind of an even closer connection but of course we want to to have good relations with all um, serious and good working organizations in this little, and I agree, Daniel. This is a small world, so we need to collaborate, but <laughs> but we also want to have good good connections out there. So, and this question came in earlier. Can you share the link to the curricula? I think you already did that. Maybe we can also put it in the chat, the direct link. I think it's way slash curricula, right? Yeah, that's that's it. Yeah. yeah. So I'll just put that in, and then. Uh, 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 uh. This is more IWP related, but I have been working in the field uh, of accessibility for many years. Do I really need to study to get certified? Well, that is a tricky question to, <laughs> to respond to uh, in a general sense, because it really depends uh, what certification or what exam you are planning to take and, and, and what did you actually do when working in the field. Um, but I want to um let you know there's a lot of information maybe a little too much on the IWP website but there's also every Wednesday we have a specific drop-in session uh, run by the U.S. Uh, staff um, around certifications so every Wednesday I think tomorrow is Wednesday so tomorrow at nine eastern uh, which means three o'clock European uh, Central European time there is a free of charge webinar members non-members everyone is is um, welcome so you can join there and just ask anything about certification with the certification specialist so there you have a possibility to ask a more kind of granular question of and describe your situation so that would be my my tip so every Every second, uh, it's every Wednesday, but every second week it's nine o'clock, and every second week it's five o'clock Eastern time. So this week and in two weeks, there's three o'clock East Central Eastern time, and the other weeks it's kind of eleven o'clock in the evening. So better to do these weeks when when it's a little bit earlier, I would say. You're also welcome to ask uh, questions to me or my colleague Alberto. We work with the EU specific parts of of IWP, and maybe Malcolm, you can also. Uh, afterwards, you can put up the the slides with the with the emails so that you can contact us directly if you have any questions around around certifications. Um, mm, 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 mm. Uh, is there an EU project planned on or ongoing which will provide open source tools to help test and audit web accessibility with automated, guided, and manual review processes? Wow. Ooh. <laughs> 
Um, yes and no. I think there are many EU projects uh, ongoing and planned covering some of these things, but I'm not aware of something that is kind of covering everything. Uh, open source tools to help test and audit web accessibility with automated, guided, and manual review processes. So, so I know, uh, I don't know if you are aware of, of those, but there's a Y tool uh, project and, and a lot of projects with, within the W3C around testing and uh, testing procedures and also around tools and also connected to uh, what is called the Y coop. I don't know, Daniel, if you are, if you know enough of those to say something about the projects W3 is doing, or if you are more kind of into the training piece and not so much involved, I'm not sure. But yeah, I'm happy, I happen to be involved in those as well. So, so that's actually a very good question. Uh, yeah. I'm just yeah trying to have a look for the link, but basically there was a, a European Commission project that that was that you mentioned that's way tools and that basically uh, pursued to write some some testing rules uh, that would actually be then included in at least three of of such uh, publicly available uh, testing tools. That project is now concluded, but the work on the ACT space continues. So if you look for accessibility conformance testing, that's ACT under the, the Y um, website, that's that's still uh, going on. We now have the rules published in the Way uh, website. And uh, yeah, we, we continue to to do the work. The Way Co-op project uh, focuses uh, more tan tangentially, if you want, on those, because there's of course some, some deliverables uh, uh, specifically related to how different tools implement the rules. So apart from the three that I mentioned, there, there may be other tools and there are actually other tools that are including the rules and are implementing those. So we also provide in, in W3C space uh, the information that they share with us um, about how, how the implementation uh, rule is going, how the different pass and fail uh, examples are treated and what the outcomes of those tools are. Yeah, and there's also uh, mentioning here of uh, uh, an old or uh, a finished uh, Horizon project called WebShare, uh, run by Fraunhofer and and others that was that finished uh, last year, if I remember correctly. But but that is also it's still still uh, uh, possible to read about the project, and there are some some tools and APIs that you can use. So I think there are several of those that have been finished already. So there is absolutely. Um, uh, material out there, uh, but I'm not aware of, of any new planned uh, or ongoing projects that are uh, covering this the, the whole spectrum of what was in this um, question. But but definitely uh, quite a few initiatives going on at the same time here. So uh, 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 yeah, and then we have a comment. I just on... put the link to the to the rules yeah, page there. So Perfect. yeah. yeah. So um, we had a comment also on the material on the curricula side that it seems to cover uh, W3 standards, but not anything on the EN standard. So I guess that is true, Daniel, that it's more focused on the W3C standards, but maybe you can comment on that. It's, it's more focused, but I, I would say it, it, this is really um, a, a step back. So it's it's information for instructors. So so. As opposed to, for example, the, the bodies of knowledge where it talks straight away to the students and it, it, it tells the student, hey, these are the competencies you have to have and these are the, the, the courses that you may want to take. This talks to the instructors. So basically what we're telling the instructors is, hey, there are these WTC standards which we develop. So it makes sense for us to, <laughs> to, to cross-reference those. But there's also the, the the possibility that there is other standards in your region or or policies to be more specific in your region, uh, and you have to take care of those and you have to uh, adapt your courses so that that those are covered. We don't name those. That's true because uh, nowadays we have one version uh, that may be updated uh, sooner or later. Uh, there may be one new uh, policy that gets added from from a different country which we don't cover, and that would be a problem. But the idea that there are standards uh, and policies that are not just W3Cs, we do we do cover. Yeah. Okay, thank you. And I also wanted to add that the um, 
uh, IWP CPEC body of knowledge is currently being updated. So I think we in the certification committee, we will kind of sign off on that very soon. And then the new version or the updated version of the body of knowledge of CPEC will cover more of the, the current situation in the EU and, and also many other updates. I'm just kind of focusing on the EU. So that is what I have been <laughs> looking for. Uh, and that will be uh, published uh, December or January, and then that means that the exam window of March, April will cover the new version of the body of knowledge. So there will be more, um, more focus on or kind of an update on what has been happening uh, lately, especially in in Europe. So there's more more to come there. So maybe we can have the ending slides up, Malcolm, if you would like to share your screen, because then I can talk about what is happening next. Yes, thank you. So the upcoming events we have now, uh, we have two things happening uh, before Christmas in English at the EU level. So next week, next uh, Tuesday, I think, the 29th of November, we have Harmonie Altenier from Coena in France talking about ableism and digital accessibility from a French citizen's point of view. And then uh, the week after, on the 7th of December, we have a drop-in session where my colleague Alberto Highlander and myself and a couple of members from different EU countries will have these kind of open drop-in sessions that we have to answer where we don't have a really a topic. It's just that people join and ask anything about uh, membership or certification or EU policies or whatever. So it's open for, it's a, just a, an hour of open talk with members and non-members to, to make sure that we cover every possible question that, that people may have. We are also doing some uh, regional events from the EU initiative uh, in local languages. So later this week on the 24th, we are doing a German webinar together with the uh, IWP DACH. So the uh, German, Germany, uh, Austria, and uh, German speaking part of Switzerland, where we present the Europe kind of leading the way uh, in, in accessibility and also answering questions around uh, how the DACH chapter connects to the IWP umbrella and so on. And there will be no translation there. Uh, it will be in German and I will be speaking in German. So, wow, let's see how that works. But <laughs> um, but uh, that is for the DACH membership, but it's of course uh, open to everyone. And then the week after we, together with Alberto, we are doing a, a webinar in the Czech Republic or for the Czech audience where we do not unfortunately speak in Czech because none of us can do that but um, our uh, very good partner and colleague uh, Radek Pavlicek from from the Masaryk University is organizing this and it's actually a drop-in that has a connection to one of the first real events I believe on digital accessibility where we also provided some material a couple of weeks ago and there was so much interest and so many questions that we decided to make a specific check um, uh, webinar or drop-in session uh, on the 9th of, of December and that one will be uh, interpreted some way or another into English because other, otherwise Alberto and I won't be able to to understand what is happening. Uh, I also want to say that Monday the 28th of November which is next Monday that is the deadline for to submit your uh, speak, um, topics for uh, IWP a digital accessibility webinar series if you would like to to uh, speak on the kind of in the general uh, events series and for IWP EU you are welcome to to uh, to apply for that or give us a tip or idea for upcoming for speakers or topics uh, at any time um, and I don't know if we had more generic information that we wanted to share today Malcolm, did you have anything more that I forgot? We have on December 7th, it's not on the website yet, but we are going to be doing a webinar in Arabic on the CPABE certification. And that is in process and we will have information about that up on the website shortly. That is so cool. We are now covering, uh, I think, 100 countries. So we are doing loads of things in local languages and providing really information and support and, and meetups and 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 uh, sharing of experiences and knowledge in in all parts of the world. That's really it's it's moving so fast and it's so so fascinating. The kind of the, the global 
reach of, of the organization. That's really, that's really good. Thank you for sharing that, Malcolm. I, I totally forgot it. <laughs> it's too much, so much going on that I kind of can't keep it all in my head. Um, and we also did quite a few uh, presentations last week at the TechShare Pro in, in the UK, in English, but, uh, and that I believe is also up on uh, AbilityNet's website, which is the UK chapter of IWP. So, so there's also some uh, good information there uh, that I think at least the keynotes are free for everyone. And uh, that is how I, how I remember it. So uh, if you have any questions about anything uh, around IWP or specifically IWP EU, you're always welcome to reach out to me. I am the uh, representative to the EU for IWP. And my email address is susanna.lorin, that is S-U-S-A-N-N-A dot L-A-U-R-I-N at and then comes the longest URL in history, accessibility association in one word, dot .org. So accessibility association dot .org. I'm, I still can't spell that myself, so I won't try to spell it out in English for you, but thank you, Rachel, for posting it in the chat. So, uh, and with that, I would like to thank uh, specifically, of course, um, Daniel today for sharing all this interesting information with us. I really hope that people will look into those uh, curricula and make sure to use them in a wise way and give you feedback, of course. That is always very cool. And the connection, I'm re really interested in how people find the connection between this material and the body of knowledge and, and the certification so that everything kind of ties together in, in a good way. That would be, we're always happy to receive any, any feedback, good or bad, whatever uh, thoughts you have on this, we're always happy. And of course, the content for, uh, for this specific material to, to Daniel, um, because he's kind of in charge of it. And then also a big thank you to our interpreters. Today, we have had more interpreters than I think ever, because <laughs> we are trying out both uh, the new features in, in, in Zoom. And so we have in parallel inter in international sign and uh, American sign language. That's kind of a luxury thing. I like that. So, and also captions, of course, and the auto, auto automatic translations into everything. So we try our best to provide as much accessibility uh, as possible and using all the technical features. And please do reach out to us if you have any, any thoughts or ideas or something we can do better. We're always happy to, to hear from you. So with that, I like to close today's little session. And thank you everyone for being here. And specifically, of course, uh, to, to Daniel and the, the staff in in the US, it's early morning for you, but now you can have your coffee and go on with your day. And for the rest of you, enjoy your evening. Bye-bye.